I love the opportunity to kind of push the envelope, break down those barriers. A bunch of women getting out there and doing something that women typically do not do. My name is Emily. I'm 50 years old. I live in Brooklyn, New York. My sister, Lucy, who I work out with, also lives about a mile away. I'm Lucy, and I'm 48. I've got two kids. In 2017, two things happened. My husband died. And at the same time, I stopped being able to run. I got plantar fasciitis. So I went through this period of both not exercising and eating through my grief, and I gained 20 pounds in six months. After my husband died, I both wasn't strong, I was like broken and shattered, but I also had to be strong because I couldn't just curl up in bed. I had a son who I had to take care of and make dinner for and, you know, a job. And, you know, once sort of a little bit of the fog lifted, I joined the gym around the corner. I found it so intimidating, like all these big guys and they all knew what they were doing. I didn't have the confidence or feel comfortable to do that. And I would ride on the stationary bike, do some little arm curls, and it wasn't really doing anything. With a six, seven-year-old at the time, it was really hard for me and felt like it was increasingly hard for me to like pick him up and carry him to bed. I've always kind of seen myself as someone who's a pretty strong personality and a feminist, but I've never been, you know, a strong woman uh, physically. I need to actually try and do something about this. And a friend of mine said a new gym opened up across the street from my house and it was Brooklyn Athletic. My name is Luis Torres. I'm the founder of Brooklyn Athletic. We're a strength and conditioning gym based in Gowanus, Brooklyn. Finish well. I wanted to create a space where we understood that people are complex. People's goals are unique to them. Through our strength training programming, through our conditioning programming, to really just fundamentally help them feel better, which is really centered around meeting people where they are. And had my first session with Luis. Thought maybe I couldn't go back there because it was way harder than anything I'd ever done. Much harder. When she told me about it, I thought, okay, this is not gonna work because she said after her first day, she was like, this guy like killed me. He made me go on the bike for a really long time and then he made me do this. He didn't let me stop. He's not like soft and warm and cuddly. And I'm like, you're looking for soft and warm and cuddly? After a few times of going there, she realized that she could actually do it. And when I went to a gym by myself every day, I would do like half of what is now a warm up at Louise's gym. <laughs> It was time for me to try and kind of take some ownership over my own body and actually do something about uh, the fact that I was getting older. She said, you should come. And I was like, I'm there. And I was sold. It is a very welcoming space. It doesn't look like something that would scare you off. Cloudy, the dog, is often sitting there looking adorable and welcoming. His style is to focus on doing the work and doing it right and putting in the time, and that kind of gets you there. What I've tried to do is not think about getting thinner and not think about, you know, weight as a number and just think about getting stronger. I think that generally, if women thought more about getting stronger and less about getting thinner, they'd be a lot happier. It's hard. <laughs> we've all got our strengths, our weaknesses, and we've all got our bodies. Finish it, finish, finish, finish. Good. It was great to just show up and have someone say, all right, this is what you're doing and you're doing it now and this is how many. I have found that it's been nice to sort of put that trust in him that like if I if I listen to him and I go there and I do the things he's telling me to do and I go on the days he tells me to go, it's working. And I can see that I actually have muscles in this part of my arm now. That's weird. I feel myself getting stronger. Good job, Brett. Yeah.
Job, yeah. job, At the job. end of every workout, we get a fist easy, bump. Easy, easy. Then it means we're done. Have a good one, y'all. And then the pandemic hit and everything shut down. We had to figure out what to do. We would work out on her pavement. Louise would bike here and stand and watch us and tell us what to do. Let's get 15 squat cleans and then 15 push presses. Deadlift, squat, back. The sidewalk workout has been like so fun. It's been kind of a community building experience too. Neighbors will cheer for us as they walk by. The impact of working out regularly during the coronavirus has been totally tremendous. Not only was I trying this new way of working out and exercising, but I was spending suddenly a lot of time with my sister. More than I had you know, like since we were living together in high school. The time we spent together is because we've committed ourselves to doing this and we both were kind of getting similar levels of joy out of it. Emily and Lucy, you know, approached me and they were like, hey, there's this powerlifting competition in upstate New York. I wanted this thing that we were doing to have like this big goal so that we were doing it and working towards something and doing something bigger. You know, I see it as it's no different than any of our members saying like, hey, I want to run a 10K, I, run a, I want to run a marathon. And it wasn't something that I ever thought that I wanted to do. I wasn't like, oh yeah, I really want to lift heavy weights. Like I never thought that that's something that I wanted to do. It's just something that honestly is it's just not normalized. Two middle-aged women doing a weightlifting competition together who are also sisters, it just feels kind of improbable. size it up the competition. Yeah, totally. <laughs> A lot of people who look pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting butterflies? Or are the butterflies already? Nervous. I know. How's it going? Good, how are you? You rack it? Fourteen eleven. Ten. 52.5, 55. 55. Thank you. Exciting. What are we going to do for warm up? Do what we normally do. Okay. Is this right that I'm supposed to be in this line? Is this weighing in? This is weighing in. Okay. Do you have your bar heights yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just wondering because it's like not moving. It's not moving. Very excited to eat some food after this. I feel too nervous to eat. You should eat because you're not going to eat again. You're not going to have time to eat. And then it digests between the rest of the There were a lot of people there who you could tell were feeling pretty intense about the day. They wanted to do it. They had goals. They wanted to meet them. But they also were there to cheer on everybody else. Full of people I didn't know. And they all looked stronger than me. And most of them looked younger than me. I know I'm not going to be lifting as much as her or her, but like that's okay. I'm not here to compete against them. You just never know how, how strict they're going to be with these things. Hard loaded, when you're up, they say hard loaded, that's when you come out on the platform. You know, when you hear hard loaded, after you hear that, you walk up to the bar, other racks, walk out, make sure you're after we do the lift and we want to go up, if we want to go up more, you're going to tell us yeah. what to go up to? You'll, just be right, you'll tell them. Okay. Uh, walk out, wait for them to signal you, then you go all the way down, come back up. They, don't, they won't tell you to come up. I wave, big breath, smooth, lock out, you tell me and then... Yeah. Good, rack up. I took it as my job just to make them feel comfortable. Really, don't forget to lock out. Lock out next time. We've done all these things before. We've squatted before and deadlift before, we've bent before. And the great thing about strength training is that we didn't have to turn our lives upside down. Just by the nature of what they did every single day, every single week, they were in a position to do really well. Here, one more big breath embrace. Everything looks good. Yeah, just slow down and you're good.
walked up, I was really nervous, and did those first squats, was sort of almost blacking out. I felt like I couldn't really see what was happening or hear anything. When I finished, I thought, oh, phew. Once I saw them hit their first lift, I could just see the happiness in their face, the excitement they had, not just for themselves, but for each other. Got it, Lucy. Okay, the bar is here. It's really, really heavy. When are they gonna tell me to press? And it's like a millisecond that it takes, but it feels like, oh my gosh, I might be stuck here forever and this might crush me. So you're sitting there thinking like, oh, did I hear it, did I hear it? Don't just press, wait until they say press. Trying not to panic. But I didn't panic and I did press and it all turned out fine. Good job. So fun. Breathing in and holding in my breath, tightening up on the bar and beginning to slowly drag it up my body. But then it gets all of a sudden really hard. And you have to push through it until finally you stand up tall, know that you've nailed it and it just feels great. That's when you just wanna like jump up and down and like dance and sing. are really a validation of everything that they've committed to over the past few years. The first thing I said, I think, after getting a medal was that I was never gonna take it off and I was gonna sleep in it. I felt incredibly proud. And it was inspiring to see all the kind of variety of women that were there. All different like shapes and sizes and ages and backgrounds and everything. Everyone's out there just like doing their best, just lifting some heavy shit. And I think it was also great that I was doing it with Lucy because it felt like it was this really big, intense thing that we were doing and we were doing it together. From where they started from to where we were at the end of the competition, I couldn't be more proud of them. It's not just about lifting things and it's not just about getting strong. It's also about, you know, being part of a community and being part of a group. One thing I've discovered over the past couple of years is that strength training is about what you're doing for yourself, but it expands a little bit beyond that when you're doing it with someone else and it becomes a little bit more about what you're doing with someone else and the relationship that you have with that person and then that you have with other people. One of the things that I wanna do is try and be a good role model for my kids. And then like, you know, my friends and colleagues and people in the neighborhood, they can see what I'm doing and they can see how happy it makes me. And they can see that I'm like sticking to it. And they can see, you know, the impact that it has. When I walked into Brooklyn Athletic and said to Luis, I want to get strong. When I think about it now, I think I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to get strong everywhere. Strength training and weightlifting is not something that I ever would have thought I would do. My husband would laugh, he would think it was hilarious, and he wouldn't believe it because it's just something different. My life had a path and a course, and then it was all just blown up. And now I have to find like a new way and a new life. I have my family and I have my job and I have my working out. Working out with my sister has been really meaningful to me. And I think we've been able to be really supportive of each other through it. And, um, you know, there were periods where I, I couldn't handle going into the gym 
but kind of I knew that she was still doing it and I knew that any minute that I was like ready to start doing more like she was going to be there and she was going to be there to support me. Totally intimidating to walk into a gym, as, or it used to be. Now it's not at all. <laughs>